Hey, this is Time Bomb, and if it's your first time checking out the channel, hit that subscribe button to catch all the updates. Thanks a lot for joining me. Here today, I'm going to do something building off my kind of fleet battle strategy basics video from the other day. is more concentrated videos on each phase. So today, we're going to start that off looking at the opening phase. So the first thing here that I want to go over is the morale breakdown on the opening phase, which is different than on the later phase. So the breakdown of morale is the AI is worth three, a kill is worth 10, the raider is worth 20, and let's talk about the morale bar, which it's different than later in the game. In the opening phase, the morale bar is at 50 total, and it starts where you're at 25. So knowing that, you need minimum nine AI to get the flip with absolutely no other kills or deaths happening from either side. Doing that will get the flip. So before we talk about how do you achieve that flip, let's again go into details about the loadouts that two teams are typically using. Now you're going to have two bombers, you're going to have two flex players, and one support player. What loadouts do they carry? To simplify for both sides, I'm going to say that the support player uses supply and beacon. The flex players, one of them has an ion missile and a conk, one of them has an ion missile and an ion torpedo, and the bombers have farm builds, which is multi-lock and goliath. You can do this on both factions with different ships. How you do that is your call, but this is the most simple, basic strategy in fleet battles for loadout-wise on what ships that you should have. Okay. So the question is, how do you prioritize what to attack first? I think the order is always one, kill AI, two, kill players, three, burn raider. So we're going to go over how to achieve this now. So one, when it comes to killing AI, the number one way to do this, we saw gas kind of originate this strategy, which is having two players dumb fire their goliath at packs of AI. So that's having the timing of, you know, timing it so between somewhere between, you know, 3,400 and, and 3,000, depending um, when the AI is moving, having your goal kind of intercept with it at the, reaching that point. So when it explodes, it takes out all five of that pack. So when both AI farm players are able to dumb fire their Golos at different packs and they take them out, that's the fastest way that you can get a flip. When they do that without any team, any player on either team dying, that's going to instantly get that flip. So that's the goal for, you know, all teams. Sending that dumb fire missile in, a lot of teams will try to intercept it, but that's going to slow the team down. So both teams sending the dumb fires, hitting them, one getting shot down, the other one not, it's going to kind of get into a cancel out situation against better teams. So those AI farmers will follow up their dumb fires if they don't hit on those packs to take them out. And that's when you've kind of got more of a stalemate. So it comes down to the farmers who can farm fastest well under pressure from the opposing team because the well the ai farm players are continuing to look for those packs of ai then we have the flex players what are they doing so that's the second way to get them the morale and get the flip and that's by getting player kills and this is the second priority for teams while your team is farming you're either defending them or attacking the opposing team now typically Teams will prioritize support or bomber players because if you kill the support, you stop that team from being resupplied or from your team being beaconed, which is generally what the meta is these days. And on the flip side, when you kill a farmer, you limit that your opponents from farming, so it's going to stop them from gaining morale in that phase that they need. So in a prolonged phase, a lot of times you'll see player kills become more important to get the flip as well. Focusing a support player versus a bomber may be more difficult to get the support player because sometimes that's some of the most evasive players in the game and it's a waste of time to go for them. So really, what you're prioritizing is the weakest target on your opponent team. The most killable player. Speaking as someone who has been that player many times, the one that's going to get focused by the opposing team, you have to be as evasive as possible to try and survive it because you will not... Just because... 
you're the weakest player they will still put two and three players on you to get that kill so they will really go for you so it's your job to bait them and be survivable your team may come in and help you but then that's going to occupy time there so this brings me to the third point the corvette and how you get the morale from that in a prolonged phase, you're more likely to see a Raider Corvette burn, especially when a team can't get the player kills. Then they're going to stop wasting their time, turn on the Corvette Raider, and try to burn it to get the flip. That's what the best teams do. Some teams may prioritize doing it earlier. That's not necessarily the best move because of the time it takes and because it will give more freedom to your other team when one player is dedicated, especially if you have two farms. We have seen some teams use modified strategies depending on the map. Something like Nadiri, uh, you, may seem te you may see teams focus the Corvette Raider off the start if they can't get the PK because they may feel more confident doing that than focusing on kills on a tougher farm map. So you do see some balance depending on the map, but I think the best thing for anyone to win the opening, how do you win it? Prioritize the AI farm, making your AI farmers and bombers as survival as possible to get that farm while they don't get killed. Your team hunts out that kill. Farm faster, get a kill, you'll get the win in the opening phase. Go on the attack first. Getting a phase ahead, getting that opening, oftentimes can be a huge difference in winning or losing games. It's not insurmountable, and we'll talk about how to recover from losing the opening and what to do when you win in these future videos. So thanks a lot for checking this one out. I hope it's helpful for you in getting those opening wins. A boom, boom.